Homecoming in the heartland, this is Cornhusker country, Nebraska University, the epicenter of college football. First Big Ten win of the year. And along with the traditions of football come the hits. Big hits, like this one that happened right in front of our cameras. No one knows how hard the hits can be better than Blake Lawrence, former starting linebacker for the University of Nebraska's Cornhuskers. Imagine if you had to like bang your head into somebody and that was your job. And so we practiced it. Your head is your best weapon as a defender. If someone said your job is to go and run face first into that wall and you're like, I'll do it for the sport. Blake had been doing it for the sport his whole life, but he started to question that after he suffered three concussions his first year playing college football. My third concussion, which was the one when I had to realize like something was wrong, was right here. Just run up and boom. You know, and, and you just like, you start getting dizzy and... Dizzy, foggy. Oh yeah. You didn't yeah. even know where you were. Yeah, and you know what's crazy is after that play, coach came up and said, great job. I, I, I did my job sure. and just, I had to, sacrifice my my brain to do it. When a player like Blake gets a concussion causing blow, his head and brain move rapidly, which can cause the brain to bounce around or twist in the skull. That can disrupt brain function. Midway through the 2013 season, the NFL reports more than 50 players have been sidelined by concussions. For young players, multiply that number by a thousand. Each year, more than 55,000 kids end up in the emergency room for football-related concussions. Local news coverage of catastrophic head injuries has increased public awareness of the problem. Friends of Tyler Llewellyn were joined in prayer at a Riverside church. The high school football player collapsed during football practice last week and died last night. Football tragedy in the southern tier bringing together now the small town of Brockton to remember a life taken far too early. So what kinds of hits are likely to land a player in the hospital? hospital rather than the end zone and how do you reduce a player's risk of concussion Stefan Duma head of Virginia Tech's biomedical engineering department has spent the last decade studying the Hokies to answer those questions our mission isn't to end football the mission is to understand what's happening and make the game better what have you learned from this research so far? We can tell you very well, a college player, what kind of exposure they're going to have. We can break it down by position. If you're a quarterback, a linebacker, a lineman, we can tell you exactly what that exposure is. Now, that impact simulated 100 Gs of acceleration on your brain, or about 100 times faster than an object in free fall would experience. And that puts you firmly in the range of concussion risk. That looks serious because it is. That's the kind of force you might experience in a serious car crash. So right here on this little diagram, you can actually see the impacts that players are taking. This is how Professor Duma collects his raw data with the Head Impact Telemetry System, or HITS for short. It picks up information from sensors placed in a player's helmet that measure the angle and the acceleration of the head any time a player is hit. So the system is showing real-time impacts right here. Yeah, basically within a couple seconds of the actual impact, it'll come in through the antenna. We can actually see live what's happening to these players. And you can plot these out over not just a few seconds, but over the course of an entire practice or even an entire season. Absolutely. We were one of the first teams in the country to limit the exposure and practices because we had all this data that said, hey, we're getting really high exposure in practice. We don't need to run all these drills. The data allowed us to see that. In 2011, Virginia Tech teamed up with youth leagues to research young players as well. I don't think anyone expected the exposure numbers that we found. From the first age, the seven, eight-year-old teams, the average number of impacts is 150 per season per player. And some of those can be 60, 70, 80 times the acceleration of gravity. Can you do that five times again? 10-year-old Ryan is one of the young players Virginia Tech is studying. 
He suffered a head injury a week ago in a running drill. Dr. Mark Rogers, a team physician for the Hokies, is giving him a follow-up exam. Does that bother your headache at all? Up here. We found even an eight to ten year olds, you know, they're getting a lot of hits during practice and, and some pretty good G force hits. Some of the hits they were getting at that age group were even up to 100 G's. That's, and that's so danger range. It's high. It's high. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of that stuff kind of generated some real changes at the Pop Warner level as well. So they're not doing a lot of those head to head contacts, they're not doing a lot of the hitting drills during the week. The fact that he may in fact have had a concussion. Does it give you any reservations about football? Oh, well, certainly when you have your, when your children gets injured, it makes you think. But um, as long as you have programs like this where people are trying to help and, and make sure the kids can stay as safe as possible. Right. And uh, to be honest, I wouldn't hesitate putting him back out there next year if he wants to play. But that'll right. be his decision. Professor Duma is also trying to make the game safer by creating an independent rating system for helmets based on how they reduce the risk of concussion. So we look at front, side, back, top impacts at a range of energy levels. And for every test, we multiply that by how many times that player is going to see it in a given year. Everything summed together, and that gives you a star rating. And the, the basic thing is the helmets that absorb energy better, lower acceleration, and that lowers risk. So right here you have what looks like a, a helmet cannon. What is this modeling different from the other test? So what we're doing now is we're going away from the single linear drop, but we know that every head impact has linear and rotation. Mm -hmm. So you have an energy input, it's gonna strike the head, and on this test, we can, the head can rotate and it'll slide away. Three, two, one, go. Remember this 100G hit? <laughs> Professor Duma says a five-star helmet could reduce the head acceleration from that hit by as much as 50%. That's because the shell in the interior spread out the force of the impact. You will never eliminate all concussions. There is no preventative helmet, but there are helmets that reduce your risk, just like five-star cars reduce your risk of dying in a car crash. Our focus is reducing the risk as much as possible. As for Blake Lawrence, whose whole life had been devoted to football, the risks of the game meant he suddenly had to face a painful decision. Our head coach, Bo Pelini, had taken me aside and said, your concussions are happening um, too easily. That summer, before my junior year at Nebraska, mm -hmm. I told myself and told my family and the coaches and the trainers and the doctors that if I had one more concussion, no matter the circumstance, I would step away from the sport of football. And um, that was really easy to say, <laughs> not that easy to do. It's game day at Memorial Stadium, and the Huskers are taking on Illinois. But this stadium houses more than these 90,000 plus fans. It's also a home to a laboratory devoted to finding answers to the concussion crisis. We have cutting edge brain imaging techniques actually in the facility where the athletes are training on a day-to-day, hour-to-hour basis. Dennis Malfis is director of the university's brand new center for brain, biology, and behavior. Why is it so hard to figure out what a concussion actually is? Right now, concussion is mostly described in terms of symptoms. Headache, sleep disturbances, disorientation, memory problems. So we know it's some disruption of brain function, but we're unable to identify at present exactly what that disruption is. All right, Kyle, I'm gonna put this towel on your neck right here, just because this is soaked in water. This cap, called a dense array electroencephalogram, or EEG, is one of the cutting edge pieces of technology Professor Mulfis is using to unlock those mysteries. You guys have a nickname for this thing? Because I'm gonna call it the science octopus. This cap has 256 electrodes in it, picking up on currents that are going on continuously over the scalp that are generated from within the brain. In those brain waves are information about your memory processes, your decision making, speed of processing, what different areas are being engaged to do anything. It's a bit more wetness than I thought there was gonna be. Huskers who volunteer to be a part of Professor Malfis's research undergo an EEG while they take a memory test, just like I'm doing here. This one is called the two-back test. I have to identify which letters in a sequence match one two spots earlier. So again, for a match, um, use the button number one with your left thumb. Uh -huh. And then when it doesn't match, press four with your right thumb. Ah, dang it. <laughs> 
Geez, they're going very fast. We think this cap is a uh, really critical way of assessing whether a concussion really has occurred. That's not the only thing you're using. You're also doing brain scans and using other technologies. We have the only system in the world that we can collect the high-density EEG data. At the same time, we're collecting MRI data. MRI data gives us information about the structure of the brain. We can actually look at things in a multi-dimensional way. These images are from a football player without a concussion. They show distinct changes in brainwave activity as the player distinguishes between a match and a non-match. But look at a player who has had a concussion. There's no change. They're virtually identical. And why is that? Because at that point, their brain hasn't figured out the task yet. It hasn't processed the fact of, okay. you know, that this number is identical to that. So at a minimum, it's probably being delayed. These are people who experienced a head injury sometime previously. So they may have had this for a year. Wow. And so after a year... You still have the lingering effects. The brain is still not processing it when it should have. Luckily, my test showed a regular change in brainwave activity. So your brain response, you'll be happy to know, is like we would expect from a normal individual. That's good. So we can give you a certification on this. <laughs> yeah, a little form says that I'm not concussed. What do you see the immediate application to be? Is it to have something like a neural EEG out on the sidelines that can help players in real time? Very much so. The holdup right now is getting the analysis procedures down to a point where we can, where they're practical, where we can tell the coach within five minutes, this person ha clearly has a concussion. Mm -hmm. They really should not be going back into the game. Would a player have some kind of idea with technology like this of when to stop playing? I think ultimately that's our hope, is that we can provide the players and coaches with information that can tell them, OK, you're at a danger point. Don't do this anymore. Blake Lawrence didn't have the benefit of a definitive diagnostic tool when he suffered his fourth concussion. He had to make the decision about what to do next on his own. I spent the next hour and a half of practice pretty much on a knee by myself, but just running through the scenario in my head of, should I tell anyone, should I not? I've always been a football player. After practice, I decided to walk right by our trainer's door, you know, just like you would in a, a film. You know, I stopped and backpedaled and walked right in and said, I'm, I, uh, I'm done. I, I've suffered another concussion and my career's over. And, uh, uh, just emotional, I was a wreck. Would you say that then you regret your decision? I don't regret leaving football. I don't regret protecting myself. I wanted to see a, a long future of health and happiness, and uh, I, I couldn't risk that. Blake is now an entrepreneur running two businesses, something he thinks he wouldn't have been able to do if he got another concussion. He also volunteers his time to educate families about the risks of playing football. Football is a game. Like, this, if I if I could talk to every kid that is putting on their helmet this weekend to play football, no matter what level, I'd say this is a game, right? And this is life. I mean, this is this is life, and this is what I get to experience because I stepped away from football. Sure. But imagine if I didn't. You know, why would I sacrifice my life for a game? Only on Al Jazeera America. A team of scientists are taking their inspiration from nature. Technology is a vital part of who we are. They had some dynamic fire behavior. And what we do. Transcranial direct stimulation. Don't try this at home. Techno's team of experts show you how the miracles of science. This is my selfie. What can you tell me about my future? Can affect and surprise us. Sharks like affection. Catch new episodes of Techno on Al Jazeera America. Check your local listings or visit aljazeera.com.